This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Today's Tuesday, which means we're doing a top five list. Uh, or more accurately, it's the first half of a top 10 list because I could not narrow this list down to five. 10 was difficult enough and there are still some um, some choices that I made uh, that, that were difficult. So um, there may be a part, uh, a part three or four of this series here. Um, and if you've looked at the thumbnail and uh, looked at the title of the uh, video, you will know that um, it's nothing at all to do with music or the guitar this week. Uh, occasionally I do do these things. It's been a while, so I thought it was high time. Um, I, did, I think the last one of these I did was uh, my five favourite comedians or something like that. What makes me laugh, which was a little while ago now. Uh, but there was a comment on the live stream um, oh, a few weeks ago now where people were, we were talking about uh, movies. What's the, what's the favourite movie that uh, that you uh, that you always go back to and watch? You know. Uh, um, what what are your favourite films, basically? So I thought I'd share mine with you today. As I say, we're looking at the first uh, five of a list of ten. And today we're going to be covering uh, war movies, mystery movies, sci-fi movies, westerns, and espionage or spy movies. So let's get right into it, beginning with... The war movie genre. Yeah, now, growing up in the 1970s, um, the big blockbuster movie that was always on TV was usually something that was made in the 50s or 60s, you know, the Saturday night movie or the Sunday afternoon movie. And many of those movies were kind of World War II thing movies like uh, Von Ryan's Express, The Great Escape, um, Dam Busters, uh, The Guns of Navarone, The Eagle Has Landed, Where Eagles Dare, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and I grew up loving those kind of films. Uh, they were all just kind of adventure films and, you know, uh, in case of Dan Buster's a, a, a true story. But the film for me that stands head and shoulders above all of those in that genre is Ice Cold in Alex. Um, if you've ever seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about and you'll know what the title refers to. But basically, it's not a war movie in the sense that it's people shoot, shooting at each other. Um the the uh the the nazi german forces only make a brief appearance in this film for like i think both scenes it's like um add up probably to less than five minutes the real struggle here um is about these four characters here uh, a burnt out alcoholic captain played by john mills um, a nurse played by sylvia sims um, a south african officer played by anthony quayle or is he we shall see. That, that's a little plot that unfolds. There's more to him than meets the eye. And a grizzled old sergeant major played by Harry Andrews. Um, they are trying to cross, uh, I think it's the Sahara Desert in the North African kind of campaign in World War II in a clapped out, knackered, falling apart at the seams, 1940s ambulance. And it's their struggle against the harsh conditions that they're in which forms the, the basis of the plot. It's a very character-driven movie. You see the relationships between these four protagonists stretched almost, but not quite to breaking point. And it's how, um, it, as I say, it's a, it's a story about um, how these characters, uh, you know, kind of uh, struggle against adversity. And the, the title refers to, um, you know, them heading towards Alexandria and dreaming of this ice-cold lager that's in this uh, famous bar in Alexandria. And uh, apparently um, you can see them about to kind of uh, go down the hatch there with uh, the Carlsberg. Um, apparently they had to do about six or seven takes of this shot and it was first thing on a morning they were all on an empty stomach and they were all um, rather worse for wear by the end of uh, by the end of that day's uh, or that morning shooting but it is a fantastic film it's it grips you it's edge of the seat stuff um and you really really do get invested in the characters and it's just it's a great great film so that one's highly recommended next the mystery movie genre 
Yes, indeed. Mystery. It's a broad and malleable genre. Uh, It can mean many things to many people. Um, You know, Death on the Nile and Murder on the Orient Express, I have heard described as uh, mystery, uh, part of the mystery genre. Yet other people will insist that it's not a proper mystery film unless there's some kind of um, supernatural ghost-like shenanigans going on. But um, for me, it's all about anything where there is a genuine head-scratching mystery that you can't figure out. And um, a film which really kind of piles that on is, yes, there's probably a few people who've seen that image will already know which movie I'm going to talk about. It's called The Prestige. And it's the tale of two rival Victorian music hall magicians. Back in those days, in the late 19th century, the stage magicians were the rock stars of their day. And the two main characters are magicians, as I said, one played by Hugh Jackman, the other played by, uh, what's he called, uh, Christian Bale. And for reasons that the plot explains, they have a deep loathing and envy of of each other, uh, where one of them ends up on trial for the other's murder. But all is not what it seems. There's a standout perfor- standout performances from both of the main actors, and um, also supporting roles. People like uh, Scarlett Johansson and Michael Caine make um, you know make a good show of themselves in this movie. It's not the last we're going to be seeing of Michael Caine in this list. Um, the significance of the top hat. Um, once you, the, the movie opens with a hillside covered in top hats like this. And you're not really sure what it's supposed to signify, but by the end of the movie, you realise what a a genuinely chilling image that is. I will say no more, no spoilers here. It's called The Prestige, and it's very cleverly put together. Uh, Lots of it shown in flashback, and, you know, kind of different timelines going on. But at no point does it become confusing. It's incredibly well put together. You never lose your place where you are in it. But it is a movie you have to pay attention to. Uh, But it... It's well worth the reward, as I say. Um, As a mystery film, I'm going to choose this one. Christian Bale, Hugh Jackman, Michael Caine, Scarlett Johansson in The Prestige. Well worth checking out. Next. The sci-fi movie genre. Yeah, now this is a genre that I think is often much misunderstood and misnamed. Ask uh, many people to name a science fiction movie and they'll probably say Star Wars. But that to me isn't really science fiction. Yeah, it's set in outer space. But it's basically, you know, it's it's a reboot of the old Errol Flynn swashbuckling sword fight movies with a little bit of, um, you know, kind of Battle of Britain aerial dogfight kind of action thrown in as well. But instead of using swords and spitfires, they're using um, laser beams and spaceships. Now, for me, a science fiction movie is one that is based in some kind of... Um, what's the word, extrapolation of, you know, of, of science as we know it. And for me, the only movie that really kind of does that and does it well is 2001 A Space Odyssey. Like most people, the first time I watched that film, I had no idea what it's about. You know, you've got all of these um, Neanderthals, or like the dawn of man, as they say, and then there's this black black monolith, and then, you know, the um, the the ape throws the uh, the stick up into the air, and it becomes a space station, and then, you know, on the back end of the moon, they discover another one of these monoliths, and then it cuts to, you know, um, this deep space mission. Um, you know, a couple of years later, and this Hal the computer. If you, I, I followed the, the recipe that Arthur C. Clarke himself uh, recommended, which is watch the movie, read the book, then watch the movie again, and then you get it. It's all about how um, you know human evolution is um, being controlled by you know some kind of uh, extraterrestrial being of some description who you never see but he communicates with mankind uh, or it communicates with mankind via these black monoliths and you know it's an incredibly clever movie it's it's for me it was you can watch a movie and not really understand what's going on and then get to the end of it and just think this is rubbish i don't understand this you know but the mark of a of a good movie is one that where you you don't understand what's going on necessarily but you think i'm going to have to watch that again 
I'm going to figure that out. I'm going to learn what's going on. And basically, it is uh, what you know what I was describing. It's 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 charting uh, human evolution as being directed and steered by um, you know an alien intelligence. You know, with the the black monoliths, for instance, tell the ape to uh, to to use a weapon. You know, and then that uh, and and to make tools, and uh, that then kind of. Uh, you know, turbo charges, I guess, would be one way of putting it, uh, the evolution of mankind. And then, you know, we get to the to the star child at the end. Um, it's a fantastic, very thought-provoking movie. And, you know, it's, for me, it's the, probably one of the only science fiction movies that I watch again and again and again. Um, you know, other ones, other honourable mentions in this category would be that, was what was it, uh, Gravity, was it, with Sandra Bullock? Is that what it was called? Um uh, I quite enjoyed that uh, again because it was rooted in science. But for me, this is the science fiction movie that beats all others. Next, the western movie genre. Yeah, westerns. I grew up watching these. I must have seen every John Wayne and Randolph Scott movie a million times. Uh, but for me, it was always Clint Eastwood in this genre. Um, I really loved all the spaghetti westerns. You know, obviously, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and Fistful of Dollars, all that sort of stuff. But for me, by far and away, his best movie in this genre is High Plains Drifter. It's not one of his better known ones, but it is worth checking out. Um, He plays a mysterious loner who rolls into town and into this kind of small town uh, that harbours a dirty and dark secret. We only find out what that is as the movie goes on, so I won't spoil the surprise for you. Um, And there are two outlaws who are on the warpath, who blame uh, the people of the town for their incarceration. They've been released from jail, and they are coming back to exact revenge on the townsfolk. And they hire Clint, or his character, um, because he is a mean gunslinger, after all, uh, to, um, to protect them. But Clint has another agenda, and you find out what this is as the movie rolls on. It's um, beautifully shot, it's chilling, it's um, exciting, edge of your seat stuff again, and the way the plot reveals itself because the, 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 for the first, you know, maybe third of the film, you, you're not really sure who he is, why he's there, what's what what makes this town so twitchy and suspicious of strangers, but it all does reveal itself as it goes along in a very clever, very engaging, and very entertaining. Uh, way so yeah uh, high plains drifter starring clint eastwood an absolute you know classic of the western movie genre and um, should be more well known which is why i'm mentioning it here next the spy movie genre yes indeed spies espionage gadgets microfilm you know fountain pens that are really flamethrowers all that sort of stuff uh, I don't get me wrong, I do like a James Bond movie, but uh, for me, I always prefer the more sort of gritty, down at heel, anti hero kind of spy in, in this kind of uh, situation. Um, does anybody remember a, an old early 70s uh, spy TV show called Callan, starring Edward Woodward? Um, uh, it, it's that kind of thing that I go for. And for me, a movie that uh, sums that up and captures it brilliantly is The Ipcris File, starring Michael Caine. Uh, apart from anything else, this film really does prove a rule that I tend to go by, which is that a good book will often make a bad film, and vice versa. Because I, I must admit, I've tried reading Len Dayton uh, novels uh, many times and I just find them utterly impenetrable I just can't get into them at all um, but the, the, the this movie adaptation is is a masterpiece I think there were three in this series where Harry, where Michael Caine played um, the, the character Harry Palmer there was the Ipcris file uh, there was Funeral in Berlin which is a good movie in itself and then uh, The Billion Dollar Brain which well the best said about the least said about that the better to be honest with you that's not a good film at all but this first in the trilogy is really really excellent 
uh, Michael Caine plays a down at heel ex-soldier who's a bit of a villain uh, as well. You get the impression from from like kind of lines of dialogue and it, about his backstory that um, you know he was a villain in the army uh, trading on the black market, and um, you know the security services realised that uh, they needed a, a villain, a clever villain like him, so they recruited him. Um, and uh, yeah, there, there are. Uh, very important scientists who are vital to the national security who are getting kidnapped and brainwashed and it's uh, Harry Palmer Michael Caine's character it's his job to get to the bottom of what's going on and well you know I'll say no more than that if you haven't seen the film I don't want to spoil it for you if you haven't seen it if you're one of the few people on the planet who've never seen this movie then you owe it to yourself to go and check it out and you you begin to realise that you know the secret service or the, the security service MI6 whatever it is um aren't populated by you know super duper uh international spies like uh the, like the james bond kind of character it's all you know just another dull government bureaucracy um which uh you know it, it has that, which lends it that sort of feel of authenticity i'll say no more about this this is a, a really good film the ipcris file uh starring michael kane well worth a watch if you haven't seen it and there ends this week's selection of my favourite movies. Uh, as I say, there's going to be a part two next week where we're going to be looking at the comedy, crime, fantasy, musical and thriller genres. And there's one of my favourite films from each of those uh, genres that going to be featured next week. But that is it for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed the video and found it entertaining uh, in some small way. Maybe I've turned you on to a couple of new movies that you might want to go and check out. Um, all of these, I believe, are available on your local streaming service whatever that might be so go and check them out next time there's absolutely nothing worth watching on television and uh, let me know what you think uh, if you've seen any of these movies yourself and agree or disagree with me then let me know down in the comment section but that is it for today folks as i say well, hope you've enjoyed what's uh, going on if that's the case please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not drop me a like while you're at it don't forget the live stream every friday 5 p.m uk time where we drink beer and talk about music and guitars a fantastic way to kick off the weekend i'm sure you'll agree uh and i'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now